I've been asked to share a meditation protocol that you can use around your small farm or homestead to kind of relieve some of the stress and frustration that you may have and build up your endurance and power to focus on what matters. Now, meditation is a powerful method to ease your mind, to free up your thoughts, and to move forward with goals and objectives. Now, I'm Justin Hitt with Prosperity Homestead, and some folks have asked about this, so I'll be happy to share it. I've uh, meditated for many years, mostly, mostly tied to martial arts, but ultimately, here we go. So this is a carry and release meditation protocol. And its focus is specifically on physically manifesting the a representation of the burdens you face, the fears you have, and other such distractions, and then releasing them in a specific place where you've predetermined the goal and outcome you desire. Now, I'm going to show you in practical examples because many of these techniques are based on Shaolin or Okinawan style martial arts where the martial arts were very utility in nature. So the actual training was utility in nature and it uses what's called a walking meditation. Now, walking meditation is you're counting your breaths and you're being very conscious of your movements and very often practicing different stances or are just making sure that you're always grounded on the surface of movement. And this is very important because as you move through a space, you're going to be breathing and moving. And in this particular case, you'll be picking up objects off the ground. Now, those objects can be, um, you know, pieces of wood. They can be rocks. They can be trash. They're, they're discarded objects. They're the burdens of this world that are just spawn everywhere and that very often get in the way of your objectives. Now, it could be logs that you're going to split into firewood, but the key is, is, is you're picking these objects up until you are unable to carry additional objects. So you don't want to be like picking up like 10 or 15 logs until you're worn out. You're pushing your limits, but you're not hurting yourself. So this medica- meditation works. You take a wooden stake and the wooden stake will be an appropriate height for the types of things you're picking up. So let's say you're picking up rocks from a field. So a lot of us are gardeners. We have rocks in the garden. We're going to pick these rocks up and we're going to move them someplace and we're going to put them uh, down and we're going to give each rock a name and that rock's name will be the burden that you're facing, the frustration, the struggle. And as you pick up that object, you will carry it. So you're going to pick up rocks and you're going to carry as many of them as you can carry in a bucket. Actually, interesting stories. When we were kids, my dad had us pick up rocks out of the yard. And I don't know why he kept having giant piles of rocks delivered, but they were more likely for the driveway. But they'd get into the yard and he'd have me and my brothers go out and pick up the rocks. And we'd pick up like four or five rocks in our hands and we couldn't carry any more. And that's like burdens in life. You know, you have a few burdens here and there and you can't carry anymore. You get stressed out. You get frustrated. Well, he said, you guys just got to keep doing the job. But it was getting too heavy. We were young kids. What we figured out is that if we each grabbed one end of a stick and we put a five-gallon bucket on the ground, we could put all the rocks in the five-gallon bucket. And then we could put that stick through through the handle of the bucket. And together, we could carry those rocks to the rock pile and dump them in the rock pile. Now, in hindsight, they just get tracked back all over the place again. But ultimately, we started dumping them in holes in the driveway. We started dumping them in other places. So they were further from where we picked them up. And it was a way to to learn cooperation. Now, this particular activity, this medication, meditation protocol, which is focusing on a carry and release meditation, uh, you're going to carry these rocks, whether you put them in a bag, you're going to put them in your hands, and you're going to carry them to where you put that stake in the ground. Now, that stake in the ground is going to have a tag on it, and it's probably going to be hip high. Because again, you don't want to have a small amount of burden that you're releasing. You want to release all the burdens you have. So you have a stake in the ground and there's going to be a tag on the stake and the tag is going to have your goal or objective on there. And it's a meaningful goal. It is a long-term goal. And I have a whole book on how you can determine what it is that you want. And this is one of the ways to remove the obstacles to get there. Now, I don't cover it in the book, of course, but it's a meditation protocol and a lot of folks have been asking about it. So you you pick up the rocks, you take them to the location, you set them down. Now, as you're setting these rocks down or these discarded objects, you are putting upon that object 
a fear, a frustration, an obstacle, whatever is keeping you from that goal and objective. So you read the goal and objective and anything that comes into mind, which is the reason why you have not achieved that objective, you attach it to that rock. That rock is a physical object. So you're taking it from your mind, putting it on the rock, putting the rock on the pile. Now, again, you could be building a rock wall. You could be stacking firewood, whatever it is. You're deliberately taking the object from one place to another and then placing it there with your burden after you've completely, you know, you've carried as much as you can, you're going to put that burden down. Now, you're not dropping the burden. You're not throwing it on the ground. You're not saying, devil behind me. You're, you're stacking it, and you're putting it in its, in its place. You're putting it around the thing that you desire because, you know, sometimes the burdens we face are a reflection of where we are in life in relationship with our goals and objectives. So let's say you want to be able to to run a marathon and you can barely walk up the steps. That distraction, that frustration, that fear is not having the health to get to run the whole marathon. But again, we're going to build the strength. You're going to say, look, I don't have the health right now, but I'm going to take action to build the strength. And you put that rock down on the ground and then you go off and get another one or you get another handful or you get another bucket full and you do this over and over again. Now, 30 minutes to an hour is just fine. You don't need to kill yourself doing this, but what you'll notice is that your ability to carry that burden gets better. So you'll be able to carry more rocks or whatever discarded object you're picking up. And as you put it down, the, even though the pile gets bigger, the stake with that tag on it, that objective always stays above the burden. Now, let's say you're stacking these rocks, and I got a great example over at the Sustainable Homestead Institute where we have a, a, a kind of a rock tower, and, and this is part of the meditation that I'm doing when I'm over there, and I'm releasing those burdens. But what happens is as you get to the top of the stake, you can you you see the manifestation of every fear, every concern is now put in its place. You can take your little tag off of the desire and obstacle, and then you can walk away. And here's how the meditation works. You continue the meditation. You continue the upright. Now, walking meditation is going to be very good posture. It's going to be movements as you're going forward. You're observing the environment. You're setting down those burdens, and then you leave them behind. As you walk away from those burdens, those burdens have no more power. They have no more value. They are essentially inanimate objects now. And your fear, your frustration has all faded away. So you are facing the fear and you're progressing continually towards the goal. So the stake in the ground is your goal. It has your goal and objective on it. And as you move through your environment, you are picking up these burdens just like in life. But you know what? At the end of each cycle, which could be a day, you know, so the, so your days are in cycles and you release that burden. Now, sometimes you're going to pick up the same burden and you don't need to be thinking about new obstacles and frustrations. But ultimately, you can start moving towards each of these rocks or discarded items are building blocks to reach your goal and objective. Because frankly, if you think about it, the frustrations that you have, the, the distractions, the, the obstacles, the things that are in your way are actually relatively few. And so once you get through those top of mind burdens, you know, when you're picking up that rock, you know, this is my family saying that I, I'm crazy for quitting that job in the city and going out in the country and starting my own farm. You know, oh, these are the people in town that think I'm dumb. Because I don't want to go out on the weekends and get drunk anymore. I want to focus on, and you're just setting them down. Now, the best way of doing this is to not speak of these things anymore. Because you've already acknowledged the fear. You've already put that fear in its place. And then you do not speak of it anymore. Now, if it's, if it's a burden that's coming back on your mind over and over, and you've been praying about it, you've been thinking about it, you can do this exercise Put those burdens and distractions in their place. Release that burden from yourself and put it on the pile. 
Now, this pile, again, is not haphazard. You're not dumping these things on here. And it's great if you can build a brick wall or you can build, you know, each brick is a frustration that you're putting away from yourself. And you don't have to name the fear. You can just feel it leaving your body and the accomplishment of it being put in its place. So again, this could be accumulating firewood and then splitting the firewood and then stacking it on a on a wood pile and having a stake that's it's kind of that goal and destination that tells you how high that pile needs to be before you stop. And then on that stake hangs in writing your user story or your manifestation or your clearly defined goal. See, maybe you think it's you don't have enough money. So you pick up a rock and you pull, you just keep picking up those rocks and then you come over and say, look, this is my money worry being put in its place. Maybe you don't have the health right now. This is my health fears and frustrations being put in their place. Maybe for, perhaps you don't know what to do next. This is my uncertainty being put in its place. Now, this is a useful activity. Like, like I said, my dad uh, had us doing this as kids. We didn't realize what it was, and he didn't call it a meditation, but it became a way to to pick up that obstacle, which were the rocks in the yard that would, that would you know, wreck up the mower, that would uh, be in the way. And we did this with dog poops too. But ultimately, it was a meditation acknowledging what we did not want and turning it into what we desire. And sometimes that meditation is going to be thinking about the things that are that you can remove from your way. Now, you got to be careful about this. You can't be thinking of these things as obstacles and giving them names and, it can, and affirming them. Because in life, you really... There's no clear obstacles. There's no real burdens. There's no real distractions until we hold them upon ourselves, until we put too much in our arms, until we put them in our backpack and carry them around. What we're doing is we're setting these down. Now, if you're a Christian and you want to say, I'm giving this burden over to Jesus, I'm releasing this for myself, um, you may uh, set, use uh, Proverbs or different prayers as you put these in place. Because ideally what's going to happen is you're going to run out of fears. You're going to run out of obstacles. You're going to run out of frustrations. And you're essentially going to be uh, stacking your blessings. You're going to be, you know, I, you're going to move towards what you're thankful of as you're moving towards a goal or objective. So you can do this in a variety of different ways. You can walk through a forest and collect the trash and the discarded items. I've heard of people using this while fixing a fence line. They go out and they're fixing the fence line. They're not talking about a lot of stuff. They're putting things in their place and they're removing burdens and obstacles from their life. Now, the goal is very important. You want a manifestation or result that is favorable and desirable, but meaningful over time. So the way you set up for this meditation is you you take an index card and you write what it is that you want. You describe it carefully. It's got to fit on that card. But again, it's a time, kind of a smart goal. It's, It's specific. It's measurable. It has a time frame and it is going to deliver benefits. And then you poke a little hole in the side of it and with a piece of thread or string, you tie it to a stake. Bang that stake in the ground. That's your commitment that you're marking right here where this outcome is going to happen. Now, I've heard bricklayers do something similar. They have a stake at one end, they have a stake at the other, and they have a string across it, and that's where they're, that's their level line. And you can think about that concept this way. This is a, a labor that builds something of value while putting aside the fears and frustrations, putting aside the distractions, it's really the concept of it doesn't matter what's holding you back, this work needs to be done. So I love to tie this to some kind of project, to some kind of community service activity, or some kind of project around the house. But you're going to have these wooden, this one wooden stake, each person gets a wooden stake. It's about three foot long, but again, if you're stacking hay, it could be eight foot tall. Pick what's appropriate for your environment. But again, on the top of that stick is a tag. 
And that tag is the desire, the outcome, the goal, the objective. And what you're going to stack around it with every burden you carry is everything that stops you. Everything that holds you back until you run out of stuff. And then you're going to start bringing blessings. And what you're going to find is something interesting. The Amish had once said, we grew up near the Amish, is they, they don't really hold grudges against people. They will layer upon them coals. And what does this mean? This means that if someone does something mean to them or whatever, they're just going to lay upon them blessings. They're going to say good things. And they're eventually going to walk away from whatever the situation is. But they're putting upon that person the the things that are uh, neutral, the things that are worrisome, the things that are not their burden to carry. And very often that other person changes behavior. Very often the other person does what they need to do. But the value to the Amish person, as it was explained to me, is that they don't carry those burdens around anymore. So again, we're... We're picking a particular job. Maybe, again, it's rocks in a field. It could be sticks in a, in a field. It could be a pile of logs. It could be uh, cutting the grass. Every stroke of that grass, that cut, is the action you're going to take. Now, sometimes during these meditations, by the way, there are no thoughts. There's only action. This is very important. So let's say you're going to scythe the field. Then you're going to rake the field. And then you're going to stack the uh, hay. So when you're scything, you might be cutting down and removing from you the burdens and frustrations and fears. When you're raking the hay, you're organizing the concerns of frustrations and fears. And then when you're stacking the hay, you're doing the same. But again, as you do this, you're basically putting those things that worry you in their place. And then you're moving on to the blessings. So I am very thankful that my blade is sharp. And I make decisive decisions. That's scything the grass. I'm very thankful that the grass is dry and and comfortable to move. But I'm going to challenge myself to make it uncomfortable by lifting a little bit more than I did last time. And then the stake in the ground where you're mounting the hay. Hey, I'm going to stack this hay high. I'm going to stack this hay tall. Just like my goals and aspirations, I'm moving towards the outcomes I desire. Can you see how this works? Now, this meditation protocol is easier to teach when it's um, situationally dependent. So again, if you're building a brick wall, if you're building a home, maybe you're carrying the timber frames in. This particular protocol, the carry and release is more valuable if you do challenge your physical strength. So one of the things about a walking meditation is that we're bending our knees, we're relaxing, we're we're feeling the soil, we're moving through a space, and as you increase the weight that you carry, you are, your, your body's going to function differently. And this is not about wearing yourself out. This is about uh, building up the physical endurance, overcoming the mental challenges, and moving towards specific goals. Now, once you take that goal off that sheet, so let's say you're, you're stacking rocks and you're at the top of your stake. You know, you can put a little metal ring around it, so, you know, like a fence ring around it, so you can make a little rock tower. But once you're at the top and you take your tag off, again, the the burden that you carried as you meditated, as you practiced your breathing, as you did this arduous duty, those burdens stay behind. You don't think about them anymore. You think only of your outcome and your goal and the blessings that build and make possible that outcome and goal. And in doing this, what happens is you start to transform your thinking to more of an opportunity thinking, more of a what can we do next? Yeah, there's a whole lot of bad stuff going on and we've got we got a full backpack full of burdens, but we're going to set down those burdens. We're going to put them in their place and we're going to move towards what can we do to reach a specific goal and objective. So I've written this protocol up and uh, included some other items. In fact, we have a meditation camp that certain people can be available of your member, if you're a private client. Um, the meditation camp actually does this for about a half a day. And there's no talking. There's minimal tools. You're carrying the objects with your own hands because that's usually how burdens come. 
You don't want to share that burden with somebody else. You don't want to pick that rock up and hand it to somebody else and say, here, you take care of it. No, you're facing your fears. You're facing your challenges. You're facing your burdens, putting them in their place, which is near your goal and objective. Sometimes you got to grab that burden and bring it over to and show it and say, you know, like a dog that pooped on the carpet, take it over and show it and say, look, this is unacceptable. We need to put this in its place and we need to move towards the desired outcome, the goal, the objective that you've written on this card. Now you can't, not a lot's going to fit on that card. You can't write five objectives on that card. You can't write 10 objectives on that card. You write the one objective. Now what makes this even more powerful is if the removing of a burden. Now this is why I I say you want to look for discarded objects. So this could be picking trash up out of the woods. This could be cleaning a room and putting every object in its place because when you look at the result, you're going to see the discarded objects, the the low-value objects now in a more valuable position or in a better environment. Again, that's why it's so important. It's splitting wood. It's stacking wood. It's, it's carrying materials. And it's a meditation that you do on a regular basis that really helps you grow physically and it also helps you grow mentally because you're going to again you will run out of the obstacles and if you start finding you're repeating the obstacles you got to let that stuff go if this is the third time you brought a rock up to the pile and you're like you know i don't have the money to do what i want to do and i'm putting this in its place so that i can have the money and you said it twice you need to be talking about the blessings you do have well well what if you have some wisdom so that you don't need the money what if you have some friends so you can cooperate together so that you can achieve cooperatively without having the need for all the money that was originally needed if just one person does it can you see how valuable this is once you walk away from these fears these distractions these things they are neutral they are discarded items and you, they've, they've been left behind to fade. Now, again, if you built a beautiful stone wall or you, you put the foundation in the house, you have not only discarded the fears, but you've transformed them into moving towards your goal, moving towards your objective. Can you see how powerful this is? You're always taking away your outcome. You're always taking away the goal. Now, again, if you just want to make the goal to split the firewood and put it in a stack, that stick kind of tells you how how much time you need to spend. And today, if it takes you an hour to get to the height of the stick, which is maybe three foot tall, and tomorrow you can see tomorrow if you can get another three feet in less time. It's about continual improvement. It's about optimization. And it is a meditation that works quite well with children, young adults, and people of any age because it's about putting your fears in their place and manifesting for yourself a clear and specific outcome. I'm Justin Hitt with Prosperity Homestead. If you're interested in these kinds of things, we do have from time to time nature walks and meditation camps where you can come and and learn how to settle your mind. I know a lot of folks have all these distractions online and they have these excuses and reasons why they haven't got their homestead or their small farm where it needs to be. We can show you how to manifest those things, how to create the abundance that you're looking for, how to build your prayer life, how to build your spiritual endurance as well as your physical endurance with these skills. And you will find that bricklayers and Amish and people who labor, they often find a labor of love because they found ways to to use the fear and frustration and sometimes even the pain to make something of value, to build something worth having, to reach their goals and objectives in a meaningful way. You can visit www.prosperityhomestead.org. Visit the contact page. You can fax, email, or send a letter to us with your questions. And this has been the Carry Release Meditation Protocol. And we have a number of protocols that are available, including like sleep meditations and such. If that's something of interest to you, please let me know. Otherwise, we'll continue with the homesteading and the gardening and the land management videos and such um, 
I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video or the next uh, podcast and keep those questions coming.